Listen. Listen. I'm going to try and take a positive approach on this. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. A win is a win, right? A win is a win. You can take a look at this league and see that the Cleveland Cavaliers just totally whooped the Toronto Raptors. You can take a look at this league and see that the Suns beat up on the Tor- on the Golden State Warriors. You could see that the Bulls beat the Sixers. So there are games where these teams find ways to win. These bad garbage squads where they find ways to win. But not tonight. The Sixers did. Although it was ugly, lackadaisical, couldn't find a way to to, to really dominate this team without Kevin Love and without other players. We still, at the end, came up with plays that mattered. Whether it was a Mike Scott 3 with a couple minutes left. Whether it was Joel Embiid's big block and Joel Embiid's huge putback dunk. When it mattered, the Sixers made the play. The Sixers did something to win the basketball game. Now, obviously, 21 turnovers doesn't help. But it's that, that's what this team does. We've seen them do this for th- years, years. It's not just going to switch now with, what, 14 games left? The Sixers turn the ball over. I'm trying to stay positive in this and say I'm happy that we won. But that doesn't excuse the bad things. The 21 turnovers is literally ridiculous. It, it's going to be our kryptonite in the playoffs. That's just reality. Why are we going to lose? Turnovers. That's got to be cleaned up. The, the the mentality. So I talked this morning about I wanted to see the Sixers just dominate a team. Kick a team's ass. Beat them down. Take care of business. Win by double digits. Let me relax with my dog look in my face and I can rub his tummy. Not really focus on the game because it's such a big blowout. Well, I didn't get that. They didn't have that mentality. We started out, I think it was 24-12 to 12 in the first quarter, and then flipped right, right the other way. And we actually were down in the second quarter, and the Cavs found a way to get going. We didn't put our foot on the gas pedal. That bothers me. But we still got the win. And this is big because third seed. I wake up every day, third seed. That's what's on my mind. I'm eating my cereal, third seed. All I think about is keeping the third seed. I want to see this team do it. But it is a little upsetting how our mentality was for this game. Now, Joel B gets some minutes now. This is his second game. He didn't have the best offensive night scoring the basketball. Like I said, he did make that one putback dunk, which was huge. But he had four blocks and he grabbed 19 rebounds. The one guy who stood out to me offensively and in this game was Ben Simmons for him to have 26 10 rebounds and eight assists was awesome and the way that he continues to show me positivity on the charity stripe is really a factor too I'm watching this kid develop and it's a journey it's not going to be easy it's not going to happen overnight but his free throw percentage as of late has been phenomenal and let's continue to watch him do that but Ben Simmons seemed to be a, a standout player for me a reason why we still won this game, honestly, even though our turnover battle was 21 to 7, just rebounding. An insane amount of rebounds, 60 to 37 in the rebounding department. We got some O boards in there, some big ones. James Ennis had 12 and 7, and four of those were offensive rebounds. And it's clear as day this guy won the battle. I mean, he gets the starting gig over. Uh, Jonathan Simmons when Jimmy Butler was out. So that was huge. It's clear as day this guy won the battle, and I'm cool with that. I'm all right. Let's go. We found the guy. Let's continue to rock and roll with that. Also, little side note, Zaheer Smith got recalled from the Delaware Bluecoats. I didn't expect him to play. I don't think the Sixers did either, but he sat on the bench, relaxed. Maybe if it was a blowout, he would have, but he got to watch some NBA experience, got to watch these guys go out there from the sidelines, which is huge. Colin Sexton, on the other hand, on the other side, he was balling out a little, but we know the Sixers. There's always going to be a guy to do that. Now, I I think he's a a nice little rookie, but nothing crazy special. Finished with 26 as well, the same as Ben Simmons. Boban got his footing back. I think his first bucket, actually, was one of those standing dunks that he does because he just gets the ball and and, and (laughs) just stands there and, and dunks it. As for J.J. Redick, he's been... 
shooting in a shooting slump lately. We all know that. He ends up shooting four of seven from three. He didn't have the best shooting display by any means, but four of seven from three, considering I've seen him shoot one of seven, one of eight recently from the three-point line. I'll take that any day of the week. Hopefully, he can find a way. I'm cool with him getting some time to relax, to be honest with you. I think he needs to, to cool down a little bit. The moral of this story is we had a chance to really show a team that we were going to dominate the hell out of them, especially when they're down veteran players like Kevin Love, and, and we didn't do that. Early, they had 12 points after the first quarter. The Cavs did. We couldn't step on their throats. We allowed them to come back in and take the lead. We consistently were, were making terrible plays with the ball to the point where it's it's... Just not being focused and being locked in. Dribble handoffs that J.J. Redick and Joel Embiid were just mishandling. These these lackadaisical passes. This is just a team that didn't really have a mentality that was correct. But you could feel it in the building. So we're coming from a, an ABC Sunday afternoon game against the Pacers. Hottest ticket. So many stars in town. Kendall Jenner. The Wells Fargo Center was at an elite form. When I was watching this game, I saw empty seats in the first row. Not any noise, quiet, just a game where people expected the Sixers to just dominate. But you could feel that right from the get-go. I'm talking within two minutes of the basketball game, I realized that no one was there. It was super quiet, and, and it just it, it was kind of on display throughout the game when it came to the basketball team. It just fed that way. That was a, a kind of foreshadowing what was going to go on. But I want to hear your thoughts down below because I know the Brett Brown ripping's coming. The turnover rip is coming, and, and I get that. The turnovers is inexcusable. That can't happen. Not during now. We have, what, 14 games to figure this out? So <laughs> we need to. But my counter argument is it's been five years. This is what it is. I mean, this is what it is. We're not just going to randomly stop turning the ball over. This is what we do. Ben Simmons only had two of those turnovers, by the way. And he had one the other night. So phenomenal job out of him, for real. He has been stepping up big time. Joel had a couple turnovers today. But he needs to get his rhythm. He needs to get back in shape. He needs to continue to play. I want to know your thoughts. So, right, either Brett, Brett Brown, which I know what's coming. He doesn't get this team going. He's always turning the ball over. I get it. I get it. What do you, what do you take out of this from a win department? Does that mean anything to you? Does the, does the fact that this team, this Cavs team, just beat down on the Raptors and the Suns beat down on the Warriors, does that show you that, listen, uh, bad teams can win. They do win at times. So even though it was ugly, there's still value in pulling this win out. There's still value in making plays late. Joel Embiid coming up huge on a block. Joel Embiid, even though he missed the first little hook shot, bang, monster slam to get the boys going and, and seal this deal. Do you still have value in that? Because I do. I do. That doesn't take away from the horrendous turnovers and the sloppy play and the wrong mentality. It doesn't take away from that. But you could have that. You can have those problems and lose, or you can have those problems and win. And I want the third seed. So winning, obviously, is the big thing here. They don't come easy in this league. We tack another W on. We continue to stay in this third seed spot right now. And that's, that's reality. We do have the... I believe it's the Sacramento Kings come on Friday. We just verify. Yes, they do. We all know how that went last time. It was a it was a situation where we were in between a Warriors game and a Raptors game. We were on a, a West Coast swing there. We were coming home for the Raptors game, but it was Golden State and Sacramento, and we fell. We fell in their building after coming off a really emotional win against the Warriors, so I want revenge. I want revenge. I want to see Jimmy Butler come in. I want to see him do well. I want to see James Ennis continue his strong game. He's been stepping up big time. I want to see JJ make some shots. I want to see him be do his thing. I want to see him get into a more of a rhythm offensively, but he hustled. I mean, listen, when you're when you're having a bad game and you still grab 19 boards and have four blocks, and Bede not would, would not do that in the past. When he had a bad offensive game, he would struggle. I remember that. I remember remember even being very critical of that. Whenever he did bad, he would just shut down body language, all that. Now, not shooting that great offensively, still almost grabbing 20 rebounds. That's insane. It really is. And coming up big down the stretch. So kudos to him, even though it wasn't the prettiest, he, he made it happen. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the thumbs up video for, or hit the thumbs up on this video for the W. 
Comment down below. Go Sixers. Big one on Friday. See you guys next time.